<laughs> uh, hello and welcome to Inbound After Hours. Um, we've got no Mark today, he's away at a wedding. Yep. But, uh, we've got usual myself, Paul, Ricky and Andrew. And we've got a very special guest this week. Um, he's founder of several companies you've heard of, Kiss Metric, Crazy Egg, he's New York Times best-selling author. And it's Neil Patel. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming and joining us, Neil. Well, thanks for having me. Good, fantastic. Cool. Um, so we're just just in case the off chance any of the listeners and viewers haven't heard of you, could you just tell us a bit about your background, your story, where you've come from, from selling CDs at school to where you are now. The uh... <laughs> yeah. So I'm a entrepreneur marketer. I started off looking for a job on the web. I couldn't find one, so I created my own job board. I realized, you know, after I created the job board and I popped it up, that just because you create something doesn't mean and launch it doesn't mean you're going to get visitors and traffic. I learned that a bit too late. Um, so then I had to learn marketing because I thought people just naturally come to your website, right? Which we all know it's not the real case. Uh, and then from there, you know, I. Uh, Focused on just trying to grow the traffic. I learned it. I got good at it. Created an agency, hated agency work. Uh, and then eventually I got into creating software companies that help people with their marketing. Awesome. Yeah, we, we, um, I was reading a bit about the, was it 15 you were when you first did your first website? Uh, 15 and a half, somewhere around there. Yeah, fantastic. So a little bit earlier than most uh, trying to get on with that. Like I had a GeoCities website. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah GeoCities was out back in the day. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just full of gimmicks, you know, like Homer Simpson's website. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trails and everything, didn't really do anything. Yeah. So, so what are you, what's your main focus today? What do you, what do, you do day to day now? Yeah, my main focus today is just growing the traffic, right? Like whatever I can do to grow my own traffic and then... My sales guys, the marketing guys, the developers, the rest of the team, they make sure the funnel converts. You know, we're generating revenue from it. My, my only real job these days is to drive traffic to my businesses. I don't have to do anything else. And what, what tactics are working for you today then? What, what's working well that's driving traffic to the site today? Yeah, what's working well right now is just SEO and content marketing. It's been working for years, but, you know, shockingly, no one still does it. Yeah. Like uh, everyone talks about like, oh, content marketing, it's amazing. Go write blog posts and people are like, oh no, it's a lot. What's my ROI going to be? How long is it going to take? And I'm like, that's the sad part about that. The space, you don't know the real answer. I can't tell you. Most people don't know, but you know what? It, it's worth it. And it consistently has produced for not just me, but look at companies like HubSpot. They're so large now and it's purely through content marketing. No, exactly. What's in the last in the last few years on the flip side? What are the sort of things you're cutting out and not focusing on anymore? Is there any tactics in the last five years or so that have stopped working that you stopped investing time or money in? No, I've been investing in pretty much everything. I don't. It, it's more so I don't start investing in things. So like when everyone's on Snapchat, I don't get on Snapchat just because everyone else is, or if everyone else is on. Instagram doesn't mean I'm going to use Instagram heavily. I'm a big believer in go after channels that already drive volume traffic are proven. And then the ones that start becoming proven, then jump on them after others are getting results. Because as a business, you usually can spend money to make up not being the first player in the space, right? I mean, when we look, uh, <clears throat> read through your blogs, it tends to be very long form content. Uh, it seems to be the way you go with it. Is that, is that a deliberate uh, attempt after looking at the stats and the way search works these days? Is it, what's, what's forced you down that route? Yeah, you, you got it right. So it, it's, it really comes you know, down to long form content, 2000 plus words, making sure it's super thorough. It, it's uh, really educational. And from there, you know, it's just doing the same old stuff, but doing it in quantity. See, the thing with marketing, especially on the web, when it comes to SEO and stuff like that, most people aren't willing to do uh, whatever it takes to just crank out a ton of quantity. Yeah. And without the quantity, you won't do well. No, exactly. I mean, one of the things we found is um, <clears throat> we ran the Eisner, our own blog for a talk we did a, a month or so ago, and we noticed all of our, I think it was our top five or top 10 blogs were well over 2,000 words. They were our best uh, traffic drivers. 
we're actually getting really long form content to convert. So when, when you write an 800, 1000 word blog, you get to the bottom mm. of the blog, you tend to have a CTA at the bottom. When you're dealing with really long form content, you've got to chop it up and put calls to actions in and throughout. What's your, what's your, been your best tactics in terms of converting really long form blogs? What, what works for you guys? So I tend to collect an email first and then from an email, I will get someone to become a customer because if I focus too heavily on uh, the, let's say the customer angle and converting them, I found it doesn't work as well as building the rapport and then through emails, just closing them, right? Um, that's worked really well for us. Yeah, so do you, you use an automation platform to, uh, as soon as someone signed up to your newsletter, nurture them over time? That's correct, yeah, we use ConvertKit. Um, but you can use Infusionsoft, HubSpot, it's up to you, the possibilities are endless. I mean, um, me and Paul were having a chat when we were looking at the Twitter channel, weren't we? And yeah. noticed when you were talking about um, quantity, I think you, you had a look into that. Yeah, you, you, I know Andrew's done it as well, we were looking at just your Twitter feed, so. What, do you post every half an hour, roughly, it seems like, during office hours? Yeah, I'm really active, or my team is active sometimes for me. When it comes to scheduling, I have people helping me out. When it comes to replying to people and stuff, I do that myself. But, yeah, it drives a ton of traffic. So we, we upped our Twitter output um, from doing a couple on the day we publish a post to one after to doing th upped it to three, and I was worried that was going to be a bit much. But I, I take it you've tested it and found that just volume on Twitter, it's, it is that fast because people follow that many people that the feed doesn't get cluttered with your stuff. You don't, you haven't had that, have you reached that ceiling yet? Yeah, it, it's too crowded. I think I have, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Every 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be too much. Yeah. It's just looking at what, what the saturation point is for that. And that's what we've been trying to find as an agency, how, where, where do we reach that? And I think if you've got to half an hour, that's, that's good going. It's a bit ahead of it's where we've working, tested it? too, and it obviously must work for you, uh, like you say, cranking out the, the quantity. Yeah, and I believe in focus too, right? So it's like you can't do everything. What works best for you? For me, it's content marketing. I do YouTube stuff, and I try other channels, but I probably dominate content more than anyone else, but that's also what I'm really good at, right? So it's like you got to figure out what you're exceptionally great at and focus just on that. And you, of course you can expand, like we do videos and we've been expanding, but it's still the same old playbook, you know, that worked three years ago that still works for us. When do you think you'll go more in favor of video? When I'll be more in favor of video? Um, I'm already heavy into video. I think that change is coming soon for everyone, right? In which Facebook Live, uh, Facebook videos do extremely well. And same with uh, uh, YouTube, right? It's really popular. And according to Alexa, at least at the moment, YouTube is more popular than Facebook. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, I spotted on your side, you're sort of about you page is just a video of you. The, your home page is pretty much dominated by a video of just you. How, how did you find, I, I'm, I'm sure you've been doing video longer than most of us, but how did you find getting into that early stages of, and using video on your homepage or as a main content for something like the About You page. Um, was that an easy transition? It's just testing. So for me, you know, just testing out quite a bit, you end up learning what works or what doesn't work, and then you go from there, right? But I didn't know video would work better. My previous page was um, text-based, and then I tested it out, and I found that the video ended up converting just as well, if not a bit better. So then I focused on that. What about the ideas was, uh, sorry it cut off there, but what about the ideas Andrew was getting at? So he's talking about having no top nav and having a, a different user experience on your site. Where do you get the ideas from for things like that? Sometimes my team members, sometimes other people's websites. Uh, like I have a, a GIF within my exit pop of I got that from a buddy, Brian Dean, and he's just like, yeah, it works well. I'm like, I tested it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the best way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you, you talked a lot about um, SEO in terms of that being your background as well as content marketing. Um, how, what, what do you think the landscape for SEO is looking like at the moment? Uh, do you think it's? Do you think there's anything on the horizon that's that's going to change things for marketers, or do you think it's business as usual? 
SEO is the same as it been. It was a few years ago. Everyone's like, oh, all these algorithms have made it hard. It's not really. If you focus on the user, you'll always do well. Sure, the thing that's changed is instead of doing well in six months, it may take a year or two, but it still works the same. It's just a long-term play. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we, we'd agree with that. We've talked about it a lot, haven't we? I think it's easy to get distracted by shiny objects in SEO or things that may influence search and things that are coming up. And that a lot of people seem to skip what we call the basics, just good on-site optimization, good link earning. Mm. That seems to get overlooked a little bit. But for us, that's still, that's still how SEO works. It, over the years, Google's still a link-based algorithm at the end of the day, isn't it? It's heavily link-based. You get a lot of links, you'll do better. Are you, um, what, what are you, you and your team thinking about things like uh, voice search? And are you preparing for that in any way? Or is it something that's on your radar? Not really. I don't do really any voice search or anything like that. I I just focus on whatever's out there and, you know, I can't control how people use voice, but more so I just get it out there and whatever happens, I adapt with it, right? Like that's marketing. Like stuff's always going to change. You're always going to have to adapt. New platforms, new players. That's okay. Just live, learn, you adapt. Is your, is your SEO strategy very heavily focused on the blog and the content side of it? Is that what you're, you're mainly trying to drive, that sort of awareness stage, long tail keywords? Is that the, the biggest part of your SEO strategy? It's not really keywords. It's not really content. It's what a user is going to end up reading. Yeah. That really depend, determines everything for me. <laughs> yeah, what, what, does, what does your week look like at the moment? What are the things you're, you're really focused on personally? I just focus on work and all I'm focused on is new traffic acquisition tactics. Like I'm testing a lot with push notifications, which a lot of websites aren't using. I'm testing a ton right now when it comes to messenger uh, chats and bots and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm having a blast just testing new acquisition channels. I saw, I saw a blog post on that actually that you sent out earlier about if you aren't using messenger chat, you're missing out. Can you just talk the listeners through that? What What's the... Yeah, the open rates are like 80, 90% and the click rates are like 30, 40%. So if you're not on there, you should be communicating with your audience while it lasts because I don't think those percentages are going to be there forever. No, and what you what you signed up on, is it uh, direct to Facebook Messenger? Is that what you find work best at the moment from a, from a chat? Well, I offer an ebook and they can claim it on Facebook Messenger. Ah, cool, good idea. How about, I know you mentioned push notifications. This isn't something we've talked about on the show before, actually, but uh, I assume you're talking about like Chrome browser notifications, is that right? How does yeah. that work for you? Do you get, what's the sort of subscription rate like compared to something like email or uh, Messenger? Uh, it's better than email. The unsubscribe rate is higher than email, uh, but my open rates are my, click, forget my open rates, my click rates are roughly like 18, 19% which is higher than email by far. And are you just RSS feeding the, the blog content out on that? Is that how it's working? That's all I do. I had to adjust the headline because the push notifications in the browser are limited on <laughs> character length, but it works so well. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't tested that, to be fair. We've been, we've been testing a lot with Facebook Messenger and getting sign-ups on that. Um, and like you, like 90% open rates, 20% <laughs> click rates, etc. So it looks really interesting, but... I think the next one to try is browser notifications. Mm. I think that's a really smart move. It's worth it. It takes a while, but it really is worth it. Yeah. We found that with with low sort of lower traffic sites than, than you're probably used to working with. What can people do to really push people onto either browser notifications or messenger and stuff like it? Because it seems quite low numbers to start with. When we've been testing messenger on ourselves and clients, it actually takes quite a bit of time to get a meaningful audience. What have you found really pushes people into things like Messenger and gets them on that? Yeah, it, it, it does take time. Uh, it doesn't work, you know, as great in low volume, but percentage-wise, it still works the same as it does in high volume. Uh, it just, when I mean it doesn't work well, is you're just not going to be like, oh my God, I'm getting 5,000 visits from push notifications. But percentage-wise, it'll still make up a good portion of your traffic. Same with Messengers. All this stuff adds up. Don't worry about it. If you're small, you don't have the volume yet. I think it's quite clever what you're saying in terms of putting the content behind that and that's the way they get it is by getting into Facebook mm -hmm. Messenger. We've been more testing with kind of subscribe or sign up, etc., which I guess doesn't make that much sense because that doesn't work as well with even email, just like sign up to my <coughs> newsletter. doesn't work as well as an ebook, does it? So yeah. I guess that's something we need to try. I think we've mentioned, and we hope it's not, but we've heard 
email newsletters aren't as popular, they don't get opened as much, yeah. so you notice. So if, if people are wanting it in their browser or into their social media inbox, yeah. it's the same same piece of content you're sending, isn't it? Send it where they want it. No, exactly. So. How, are you, how are you finding email for your channels? Is it still as strong as it was three, four, five years ago? No, it still works well. Yeah, no, we've noticed it as well. No. I mean, it looked like it came to a period where it kind of plateaued a little bit. It looked like it was dropping for a few years and then... People have issues with email because they don't clean their list. If you clean your list, email's always been fine. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. And something we've been putting a lot of time and effort into for ourselves and clients is the idea of what, what we call, which is what HubSpot coined, it's kind of like grey mail, that where you've got a lot of subscribers but they're really not engaged at all and it's kind of falsely boosting your numbers. We've been spending a lot of time cleansing those guys out. It's not a problem though, is it? It's not how we've said it a couple of weeks ago. Of very happy to stay signed up to an email, but just don't open them. Yeah. But if it was into my Facebook inbox, yeah, I'd open it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how how long do you think things like messengers got left as being a really unique proposition? So those open rates are like ninety percent. Mm. I, I mean, I've never personally. I, I would say it'll last for years. The question is, is how good will it be in a year or two? Yeah. And how, how long will it last compared to something like email? Cool. So the way we always try and wrap up is just to get your, if you could give one tip for our listeners who are normally sort of uh, mid-market in-house manager, marketing managers, what would be the one tip you would give them to go and, to go and look into or work on today? Uh, if you're in-house, set goals for yourself. So break down your marketing tasks in very small bite-sized chunks where you can say, all right, on Monday, you can create some goals. Like the goal could be increased conversions, increase, you know, traffic. By Wednesday, you can get it implemented. By Friday, you can see results. And if you do that, you'll notice that you'll increase how fast you execute. And if you're not able to do it within that time frame and you're saying, oh, people move too slow or there's this problem within my company or this is going to take forever, A, you're making excuses, and B, your tasks are too big. So break them up and make them even smaller. Like I wouldn't do something that's like, I want to grow my traffic by 10% by the end of this week. If, if my overall goal is to grow by 10%, one of the things could be like, okay, well to grow traffic, I know I'm not going to get 10% in one week, but to grow traffic, I have to publish more content. I normally publish one blog post a month. Let's see if I can publish another blog post just once this week. And that would be my task, right? to uh, blog, create it, and then of course you want to promote it as well. It's a really good tip actually, and, and one no one's ever mentioned, because when we, when we go out to see clients and they talk about their goals, they're like annual goals, they're so big and long term that no one's breaking them down. No, no one is. And that's why most of them miss them. Yeah, I think that's great. It's, it's, a, it's a quick way to execute and get things done, I, I, and that's a, something we're huge fans of. So. Not easy, that one. No, <laughs> yeah, I like that tip, definitely. Yeah, it's, it solved one, it's answered one question I had, really. I, I wanted to ask you about somebody in, involved in as lots of things as you are, and we, we're busy in our own ways, and people watching will be. Just time management in a, in a marketing role can be challenging, especially when stuff's coming at you from all angles. Definitely. How do you how do you manage your time and stay organised? And do you how do you put stuff? Say no, I'll deal with that when I have time next week. Do you uh, use an app called Rescue Time? It helps you manage your time and improve your efficiency for free. Oh, Rescue fantastic! Time, we yeah. need to take a look yeah, at I'll that. Put a link in for that. Yeah, yeah, we'll put that in the notes, won't we? Fantastic. Well, uh, appreciate you're a busy man. So uh, really appreciate your time today. Yeah, thank it's you. Been a blast. Well, thank you fun. for coming on. And uh, yeah, let's wrap that up. Yeah, great. Well, thanks. Uh, Thanks again, Neil, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, James, on the cameras, as yeah. usual. <laughs> so we'll see you next time on In Inbound After Hours. Cheers. Yeah, thanks, guys. Okay. Cheers. Cheers.